It's that time again. Inktober is upon us and I am back with some more comic inking art hacks that you can use for Inktober or the whole year round. <laughs> Greetings everyone, welcome to the underground layer where we bring our creations to life. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. I'm a professional illustrator, designer, and mad creator because you have to be a little crazy to do this thing called art. If you are an artist, then you know that October means Inktober. And if you're like me, a comic book artist, then inking is like a 365 day of the year thing. Something I do all the time, one of my favorite pastimes, something I'm very familiar with. So I have a lot of hacks that I have accumulated over the past, I don't know how many years doing comic book art, inking specifically, and I want to share some of those th with you that I haven't talked about before. Now, I have done one other video, so if, there, if you're watching this video and there's some tips that you're like, why didn't he talk about this? This is a great tip. Uh, he totally forgot about it. It probably is in the other video, but I do have some new ones, but I'm, this is sort of, sort of a, you know, a companion to that other video. I will put a link to that at the end of this video so you can watch both of them, get the full experience. But before I get into it, I want to just mention real quickly that these are traditional art hacks. If you are doing Inktober digitally, these may not work out so well for you. Now, I also do digital inking. Actually, lately I've been doing a lot of digital inking. I'm really starting to enjoy it, but there's still not Nothing quite like that feel of the ink on paper that I get from, from inking traditionally. And the reason why I don't do digital art hacks is because I really don't know how. I mean, it's kind of like those would just be shortcuts or you know, recommendations on brushes and things like that. But to me, art hacks are something that you do in a roundabout way, uh, something that's a little unorthodox or that, that just isn't exactly the way you're supposed to, using tools in a way that weren't intended or whatever. And with digital, it's a little different story. So although I am a fan of digital inking as well, I kind of bridge the gap between those two worlds. These, these tips are particularly for traditional inking. So uh, with that being said, now that you know what the video is all about, I'm going to get to these uh, inking art hacks. All right, tip number one, set it and forget it. So maybe you've seen on previous videos, I use these little bottle caps. They're just water bottle caps. I put my ink in them. The problem is they can kind of get kicked around and they can spill and everything. You don't want that. So what I've done here is I've got a piece of cardboard. This is basically just a comic book backer board that I've cut in half. And then I've got a glue gun here. I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue to the bottom of this. And I'm just gonna set it right down on this cardboard and it doesn't take long for it to set. Um, now, as you can see, you know, it's really, it's not gonna go anywhere. And this so serves sort of a dual purpose. So here, let me get some ink out. Just drop some ink in there. Now I've got my, you know, I've got my ink. Uh, I got a little reservoir for my ink. I got my brush and I also have something that I can use to kind of wipe out and make sure I've got the right amount of ink. So, and you know, you can keep reusing these. You probably got a lot of bottle caps, just start saving them up and you probably have some cardboard. So when you fill this thing up, uh, on to the next one. And it's, uh, it serves, a, it recycles it a bit, you know, and then you can probably throw that in a recycle bin. Um, but there you go. This is tip number two, drop and crackle. So on the last time I did an inking hack video, I showed you how to do some Kirby crackle style dots using Q-tips. Uh, that's still a pretty good hack. The problem is because the Q-tips have you know, that fiber on it, sometimes that can get in the ink. So here's a, another solution that you can try out. Now, if you use uh, ink that comes in a dropper like this, you probably got a little eyedropper. Um, just a word of advice, the Higgins Black Magic doesn't really work for this. If you notice, the Higgins Black Magic dropper is very like hard plastic, especially here on the top. Uh, but if you have something like a Dr. P.H. Martins or FW or any kind of eyedropper like this, if you take, take your eyedropper, uh, just drop it in the ink a little, and then I'm just going to practice a little on this page. But you can see, and just depending on how hard you press, so I'm going to press harder, you get bigger dots, you know, but you can press a little bit like that, or you can press harder. It also depends how much ink you have on. That's, you got to watch out, <laughs> you get a little splatter. The good thing about ink is it's all, you can correct that stuff. And sometimes that might even be an effect you like, but just another way to get that Kirby crackle effect. 
All right, tip number three is color coding. Now, if you're like me and you use microns or you know Copic multi-liner pens or whatever for some of your inking, you'll notice that there's you know there's all kinds of different sizes, but really at first glance they look pretty identical. You have to go through and oh, there's a number eight, we got a number zero zero five, whatever, or you can look at the tips. But usually when you've got pens sitting around, I mean sometimes you just want to grab a pen, you don't want to have to look at it and figure out which pen it is. So what what I like to do is I just get some of this color electrical tape. You can get this probably at a dollar store or any place that's or any kind of color tape or any any way to mark your your markers. And what what I'll do is I'll take a piece off here. So I'll just get a little piece of red here. Cut a piece of that off. And then let's see, let's just get you know and just put a little band of color on it so that way once you get enough of these and you you know you've got different colors for each one and all you have to do is remember oh my eight is my green and you can just at for, you know again at first glance oh that's the one I need that's the one I use all the time instead of having to kind of look through it and everything so just a little hack on a way to organize and kind of uh, speed up the process when digging through pens on to hack four, disposable no more. This is another Micron hack. So uh, if you use Microns, you know that they're disposable. Once they run out of ink, um, there's pretty much not much you can do with them. Um, this one's starting to lose some of the ink in it. Uh, but that's not really true. There is a way to refill Microns. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. So you're gonna need an X-Acto knife. And I don't know if you can see this, but right here there's a little piece here the met there's the metal tip part here and the plastic and uh, you know I've here's another I guess a bonus hack but in storing your exacto knives uh, I just store mine like that just so they don't poke at me and it's still it's still sharp enough that I can take that and I just kind of push that through here and I've just popped that off here if you can see that and then we're gonna set that aside so as you can see there's a little reservoir there and what I'm gonna do is I am going to get some ink I've got this deleter black um, deleter black probably my favorite ink to use it's not a super thick ink uh, and because of that it tends to work well in microns typically microns have a little bit of a thinner ink um, so I'm gonna use some of that I've just got a little pipette here you can use an eyedropper or whatever you decide to use um, that's probably too much ink. We don't want a whole lot, but that'll fit right in there. And I'm just gonna drop some in a little bit at a time. You don't want too much, like maybe, maybe like three drops. There you go. All right, then we're gonna take, and we're gonna just pop that back on there. We'll kind of wipe it off here. All right. And then just to let the ink flow, you probably want to hold it up here for a little bit or you can set it on something just to let, let that drain back into the tip of the marker here or the, the pen. And then you're going to notice it's really smooth now. So yeah, just a, a great hack. So why throw away those old microns? I mean, they don't hold, but they seem like they go down pretty well and they're not that cheap. So uh, my advice is to refill them. We're at the halfway point. This is hack number five, not just for drinking. Now, uh, I'm always on the go, and when I am on the go, typically I bring my brushes with me. A lot of times I have a little pouch that I carry them along with my, my, uh, you know, my pens and things like that. Unfortunately, you know, where pens can go bang around inside those pouches, brushes not so much. You don't want them to get damaged. Uh, and some brushes do come with this little plastic sleeve. This one has one, and those are great. Uh, they don't all have that, and sometimes you lose them. Them or, or whatever or uh, whatever the case is but you know and I don't know exactly where to find these so what I do is I just get some drinking straws here and a real easy hack that you can do I just cut them about like right there um, and then you can see this is my Windsor Newton series 7 I'll pop that on there and it fits nice and snug. It's not gonna hurt. It's not coming off unless you pull it off. Now, of course, some brushes are a little smaller. So if, if let me cut a piece off here and you can see what I'm talking about. This one is a little smaller. So when I put it on there, it's just gonna, 
it's it's pretty tight. This one's not too bad, but that, that one's got a snug fit. But some of them, you know, you don't want it to go like that. So one thing you can do to make these a little more narrow is just go to the bottom of the straw, kind of cut it a little bit down there, get some scotch tape. Just kind of push that in a little bit. Just basically what you're doing is you're making the opening just a little more narrow and then go ahead and wrap that around there. And then we can go in with some of these smaller brushes and that's gonna get a snug fit. Now sometimes you may have a larger brush if you do a lot of spotting blacks and you've got big black areas that you want, want to drop ink into, you may have a bigger brush. I don't have one here, but you can find like boba straws or smoothie straws that are a little bit bigger and you can use those as well. If you've got a super tiny brush, maybe even, a, I don't know if a cocktail stirrer is too small for that, but you know, there's different size straws and everything, but usually with these, and like I said, you can adjust them with just a little scotch tape and a little notch in there that you close and and it pretty much works every time and it's, it's gonna protect your brushes when you're out on the go. This is hack number six, make a mall stick. So if you're not familiar with a, what a mall stick, I will get to that in a minute, but a lot of times when we're drawing, uh, one of the things we do, because it's, it's really, it's heavier in your hand to have to rest your, not, you know, rest your hand on your paper, and you don't wanna ruin, you got a large piece of art like this, you don't wanna damage it. So sometimes, you know, we can use a, you know, paper or whatever, but even sometimes with that paper creates some friction and sometimes that can smudge too. Uh, so one of the things, and this is sort of a side painting trick is using a mall stick. Now, I'm just gonna kind of make a makeshift one. Now, I've got a dowel here, and I'm gonna show you two different methods of this. Uh, one is pretty simple if you have the right tools, but this one, uh, this one requires just a, a dowel, and I've got like a little rubber ball here, and I've drilled a hole through it, and I'm just gonna kind of put that in there. Um, and there's other ways you can do it. If, if you don't want to go through all the trouble of doing that, you can get like a styrofoam ball and then sometimes you can wrap it with just some fabric and wrap it with like a rubber band so the little bits of styrofoam don't get all over the place. But, and basically, and I would probably do this off, off my page, but I'm just gonna show you right here so it's on camera. Um, actually, because I'm right-handed, I'm gonna do it like that. And basically what you're doing, this just rests on the page and I can get my pen here. And I can go in and if I'm adding blacks or whatever and I can just kind of move this around and basically my other hand as you can see right here is just kind of lifting it up so my hand isn't resting on the page so that's one way to do it but I find and, and this was really good for sign painting or if you're doing like oil painting or whatever a lot of artists you know traditional like fine artists will do that uh, with this kind of a mall stick like this here's another method that I really like and it doesn't as long as you have the tool with you it uh, it's fairly easy but I've just got I've just got a t-square you know I use a t-square all the time for rolling out lines so I've got my my T-square and I'll just rest the T-square on here and just put my my thumb underneath it and it's flat so it's gonna you know it's a, a little more comfortable than resting on that round dowel but um, you know that's what I I do and, and because the T-square square is raised it's got you know this part of the T right here that's already off the page and then like I said I just holding my my thumb up and I can kind of move that around so I can I can draw here and my hand isn't touching the page and that's gonna that's gonna make sure that you don't you know smudge and everything like that so just uh, kind of a makeshift mall stick uh, and that's how to do it continuing along with hack number seven this is h2 ink so one of the things that I do is I've sort of opted for using brush pens usually at least for sketches when I'm doing when I'm doing an actual ink piece that's going to be you know published or whatever I'll probably opt for like a Windsor Newton series 7 uh, brush but especially if I'm doing convention sketches or if I'm doing a store signing or whatever I need something a little quicker that it, it, it's going to be less mess if I'm <laughs> dealing with ink or whatever uh, and brush pens work really well and uh, you don't have to keep dipping in and everything so a little more expedient they're they're really good for convention sketches um, brush pens can be a little pricey there's a cheaper alternative actually you can pick up these these like water brushes really cheap and typically what they're used for is you load them with water and they're for watercolors so you know you put water in the in the little cartridge here you just 
you know, fill that up with, with water and then you get your watercolors and you dip it in and then, you know, <laughs> and then you're, you're off doing watercolor with, the, with this water brush. But one thing that some people, some people have figured this out, some, not everyone though, but you can fill these up with ink. So just get your favorite ink, just like the hack I showed you before, get little pipette or whatever, or eyedropter. And the, the good thing about these is they tend to hold, uh, because they're made for water, they tend to hold a lot more ink than your standard brush pen. So it's just another option. It can be a cheaper option. And especially, you know, if you don't want to use all of your brush pen up for like bit larger areas, that's what I typically use this for. Um, it's really good because it holds a lot of ink and I can go in and I can spot blacks and things like that if I'm working on a larger area with black ink. So yeah, refill or just fill up these water brushes with ink and they work pretty good. All right, we are at Hack number eight, this is patting your ruler. Now I've showed a few different ways to do this in previous videos, uh, but I've got a new way to do it. And if you do have a ruler like this, you'll know that if you're inking, it always helps to lift your ruler up a little bit off the page so that it's not, you know, it's dragging through the ink and smudging and everything. Um, so like I said, I've showed some other techniques, but here's a new one. I got these little felt pads and you can buy these pretty much anywhere. I probably got these at a Home Depot or a Walmart or something like that. And they're these little self-adhesive pads. They come in different sizes, different thicknesses. So you can find those, but they're self-adhesive. There's a sticker on the back. You just go ahead and you can pull that off. Hopefully they're coming off here. But typically what they're made for is like furniture or whatever, so they don't scratch things up or whatever. But you get a couple of these and put one on either side. I'm gonna put one there. And I probably would have to put one in the center or else it's gonna droop down. So this, this is a, a little bigger ruler. So this might take maybe, maybe three of them. Let me get another one out here. So I'm going to do three of these, just depending on the size of your ruler or how stiff your ruler is. A wooden ruler might not bow as much as this metal ruler. I prefer metal rulers because I also use the X-Acto knife quite a bit and they're not going to scratch through the, you know, cut through the wood. So there you go and that raises it up quite a bit so that when you go through here, if I'm going to do my lines, I'll just go across there and it'll make good lines and it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to smudge that much. So just another way to accomplish that task. Here we are at the pin ultimate hack, hack number nine, makeup time. So in past videos, I showed you how to use some extraordinary or alt, you know, alternative methods for getting unique looks while inking, I've showed how to do, you know, splatter with, a, with a, a toothbrush or using a razor blade to create rain or all kinds of cool elements that you can use. Um, typically, we use a lot of brushes uh, when we're doing inking, uh, but I decided to try something a little differently. Now, I got this, I got this sort of tip that you can use makeup brushes for like faux finishing. They're, these are relatively cheap. I think it was maybe $8 for this big thing of brushes, they're makeup brushes, and there's all kinds of different things. So I just thought, you know, one of the fun things about, you know, being an inker is just experimenting with different tools and see what kind of effects you can have. So I would advise if you're gonna play around with these, do it on a separate paper and see what kind of effects you can get and you may, you know, you may discover, oh, that's a really cool technique. But like I said, and these, these you don't have to worry about banging it up or anything like that because they're just, they're super cheap um, and who knows. So let's see what kind of brushes we've got here. We'll experiment with some different things. Really unique thing, even like this eyelash brush here. I think that's what that is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pour a little ink in this. I'm gonna use a little wider tray because some of these are wider brushes. And let's just see what we can come up with. Um, the first thing I noticed right here, uh, I showed you earlier how to use, how to kind of create a sort of a Kirby crackle look, but uh, this, I don't know what kind of brush this is, but I'm gonna dip some in here. It looks like I could probably, yeah, I could probably do some cur sort of Kirby crackle-esque stuff like that. It's a little more oblong, but who knows, that may be the look that you're going for. So there's one thing. I'm really curious what kind of effect I can get with this. Maybe even like a wood grain or something. Let's see, I'm gonna do it on the side. So yeah, I mean, you never know. You, I mean, there could be an instance where you want something like this. I've seen people, you know, certain artists, they just do these crazy stuff. Like, how did you get that? You know, how did you get that look? Um, and you never know. I mean, I'm just gonna get a little on here. Kinda. 
Now look at that. Who knows? And a lot of times, some of this stuff, it may require some masking and, and things like that. But but there, if you want to go crazy with your ink, try, just try out some experimental, you know, tools and everything. And like I said, um, you know, that might be good for spotting blacks and they're super cheap, but look at the, look at the fraying you get like that. Look at that. Look, isn't that cool? Imagine, imagine what you could do with that. Um, so yeah, play around with this stuff and I'll, I'll leave links to where you can find some makeup brushes. Um, also maybe some of these pipettes and some other things that you can use, but don't be afraid to experiment with different tools and see what kind of effects you can come up with. Okay, we made it hack number 10 and I saved probably one of the most important ones for last. This comes very handy and that is brush repair. So I have with me a Winsor Newton Series 7, uh, probably my favorite brush. Unfortunately, this one has seen better days and they're not, like I said before, they're not cheap brushes. So uh, I try to take good care of them, but with a lot of use, they do get a little banged up. You can see it's sort of lost its tip. It's not as sharp as it used to be. So there's there's a three-step process that I want to show you on how to repair this and it's just using regular tools that you'll have about the house you can get you know there are you know brush conditioners and things that you can get but if you don't happen to have those uh, these are hacks again so this is just with ordinary things that you have around the house like water so we're gonna start off this is just regular tap water now all I'm doing right now is I'm just getting the brush wet nothing fancy about that just like if you were going to actually clean off your brush so I'm just gonna get that nice and wet before I move to the next stage so so yeah so now that it's wet I'm just gonna set it aside and then we are going to boil some water okay so I've got a pot of water boiling right now you want to get it nice and hot it has to be pretty hot and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get uh, you know a glass container big enough for your brush or whatever to sit in there This is a Pyrex, so I know it's not going to get hurt by I mean, it's not going to crack or anything It's you know heat resistant and everything so I'm going to pour that boiling water in this and take it back up to the studio Okay, I got my hot water. The other thing I'm going to need is just some basic hand soap or body soap, whatever you call this stuff. It's just a bar of soap um, and try to get it, you know, you probably want to get it unscented. Um, just your basic soap and then what I'm going to do is I am going to dip gently just the brush of the just the bristles you don't want to get too far in here because there's actually glue that holds these bristles together and if you get it too hot that will melt the glue so make sure you don't get too far up here in the shaft you just want to get the the bristles wet and I'm just gonna kind of keep that in there in this hot water for you know just a little under a minute maybe 30 seconds 40 seconds maybe a minute at the most okay and then once I get that I'm just gonna gently just drag it against the soap and I'm going to keep doing that and I'm going to kind of rotate it around a little bit yeah just make sure that you're turning it around you're just trying to get the soap in between the bristles and you're, you're curving it just try to get the shape as best you can and then once once you get it coated pretty good with soap you can see close to what you're going for then you're just going to set it aside you're not going to touch it. You don't want to wash it off. You just want to set it aside with the soap on it and you're going to keep it sitting there and you want to sit, let it sit for a few hours, maybe four hours. Um, and then, and so that's what I'm going to do and we'll come back to it. All right. So our brush has been sitting here for a few hours. Now what we're going to do is we are going to rinse it off with some water, get that soap off and run it across a cloth here. And I can already tell it looks a lot better than before. It's pretty sharp. See that? So let's test it out here and get some ink here. Load my brush up with some ink. And yeah, I'm not seeing any of that pretty good. I'm not seeing any of that, those frays or those bristles. So there you go. 
All right, so there you have it. Those are more inking art hacks, ones that I didn't really get to in the last video, but if you want to, you can definitely check out that other video. Like I said, towards the end of the video, there will be popping up here a link to that where you can check that out. And if you watch both these videos and you, you're saying I still miss something, let me know in the comments section. I'm always looking for new tips and things like that. So if you've got an inking tip that you use that I haven't even thought of, Man, I'd like to hear it. So just leave that in the comment section. And if I get enough of those, because I'm kind of running out, honestly, of some of my, my best inking art tips. So uh, other than that, I don't know what else to tell you guys. But you know, I'm always experimenting, and there's always new things that I figure out. So who knows? There may be a third one of these videos, especially if you guys have stuff to contribute. So let me know in the comment section. And other than that, I'll see you guys later. That is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Surfworks on social media. And now you can support the work that I do on Patreon. Do you like making comics? Then go to surfworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.